Let's talk about a live album from 50 years ago that might not be remembered much today, but is a landmark in the history of 70s prog heavyweight Genesis. I'm Scott. This is Celebrating 50 on Geezerology, and I'm here to talk about the 1973 LP, Genesis Live. Genesis Live was a relatively low-profile release that nevertheless did have a notable impact on the band's trajectory. This one was issued in the UK by Charisma Records in July 1973. We did not get it in the US until a few months later when Atlantic Records released it in early 1974. Genesis Live was recorded over two nights in late February 1973 during the band's tour for their fourth album, Foxtrot, which had come out a few months earlier in October 1972. The two February concerts were recorded for the syndicated radio show, The King Biscuit Flower Hour. But for whatever reason, King Biscuit producers decided not to use those recordings, and they landed in the hands of the band's manager, Tony Stratton-Smith, who also owned Charisma Records. Genesis was building some momentum around this time. Foxtrot was the band's commercial breakthrough in the UK, and Genesis had found some receptive audiences with a couple of shows in the US. Because Genesis was not scheduled to begin work on a new album until August of 73, Stratton Smith decided to release the tapes as a live album to fill the gap in the marketplace. At Peter Gabriel's insistence though, the LP was not released in the U.S. right away. Gabriel wasn't a fan of the record. He felt it was a rush job that would cheapen the band. He thought the sound was too raw and complained that it wasn't given proper care in the mixing room. He won the argument that it wasn't a great way to introduce the band to a largely uninitiated U.S. audience. But Smith did get it out in the U.K., and it turned out well for the band. Genesis Live got good reviews from British critics, and the cover photo of the band on stage with Gabriel in his Maggog costume attracted curious eyeballs, and the UK public ate it up. Genesis Live became the band's first top 10 LP in their homeland. We got the album in the States months later, after Genesis had their US breakthrough with Selling England by the Pound later in 1973. The band turned up in Southern California in January 1974 for a few gigs that went pretty well, and that included a spot on the late night TV show Midnight Special. I'll be waiting here so records capitalized by giving Genesis Live a release shortly after that. Now, this album is not a groundbreaker by any stretch of the imagination. Its five tracks are close reproductions of songs from the second through fourth Genesis studio LPs, and those were Trespass, Nursery Crime, and Foxtrot. Nothing new has been added to the songs. There are no improvisational jams, no rewrites of lyrics or anything like that here. They're just they're just straight out performances of the songs as they were initially recorded. What you do get really can be seen as a best of collection from the early stage of Genesis' career. The epic Supper's Ready isn't here, even though the front cover photo comes from a performance of that classic. But getting past that, the five tracks that are here serve as a fantastic capsule of what this band was all about in its first few years of existence. The sound here indeed is raw. 
it's soaked in the echoey ambiance of the small theaters where these songs were performed. The performances are not studio perfect. They sound like live performances, but with some snippets here and there of Gabriel's Between Songs patter, this record does put you in the venue. You feel the full power of Genesis live performance here, and that, to me, makes for a great live album. I would go so far as to say that I prefer listening to pretty much all these songs here over the studio versions. There's just a raw power in these performances that you don't feel in the glossy studio versions. Now, that's especially true for the two tracks on side two. The musical box, which is the classic that opened the third LP, Nursery Crime... And The Knife, which was a standout track from Genesis' second LP, Trespass. I find the immediacy and the power in these two performances to be breathtaking. The three tracks on side one are strong performances as well. We have Watcher of the Skies and Get Em Out by Friday from the first half of Foxtrot and The Return of the Giant Hogweed from Nursery Crime. You really do get a sense with this live album of how great these guys were at such a young age. All of them were in their early 20s when this album was recorded. And Gabriel is magnificent at a time when he was still learning what it was to be a great frontman. Tony Banks is already a genius keyboard wizard. And Mike Rutherford is always a solid on bass and rhythm guitar. But I think the standouts here are the two newest members of the band. This live album is where we really get a sense of what Phil Collins and Steve Hackett brought to the table. Collins is magnificent on the drums. I don't think it can be overstated how great he was. Genesis was becoming well-known at the time for its complex musical arrangements that ushered in the classic era of Prague. And that hinged on Collins' incredible ability to keep everyone on track while simultaneously turning on a dime. You really understand how great he was listening to this live album. And Hackett's lead guitar adds such depth to these songs that wasn't there before Nursery Crime and was sorely missing during the band's pop monster days of the 1980s. Hackett was an underrated lead guitarist because he was so overshadowed by Banks and Gabriel during his time in the band. But pay attention to his work here. It is impressive. Now, in the grand scheme, Genesis Live might have been a throwaway. You know, it, it was a filler in the band's early discography, no question about that. But this release, and in particular the cover, did accidentally become a turning point for the band's near-term future. First of all, that front cover photo was the first time the general public, especially in the U.S., got a glimpse of Gabriel's outsized stage presence. It came along at just the right time to attract sightseers and arouse the curiosity of a new group of fans. His bandmates were never thrilled with the spectacle Gabriel created with his costumes. The bright spotlight it put on their front man caused some jealousy among his bandmates, but they did understand that this stuff was helpful in boosting their commercial prospects. And then if you look at that small bit of type there in the middle of the back cover, that's a fantastical little short story that Gabriel wrote to add a bit of whimsy to the packaging. As it turned out, that was the genesis of what became a wedge in Gabriel's relationship with the other guys. Filmmaker William Friedkin, you remember William Friedkin, 
he had a couple of hit movies in theaters around this time. Yeah, that William Friedkin. Well, he became captivated with that little story on the back cover of Genesis Live, and Friedkin contacted Gabriel to ask him to consider writing a screenplay with him. Gabriel became interested and engaged in some talks with Friedkin later in 1974 after the Selling England tour. As Genesis started work on the next album, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, Gabriel asked the band for some time off to pursue this new career opportunity. But his bandmates refused. They wanted no part of it. They felt that it would be an unnecessary distraction at such a critical time in their careers. Well, also, at about the same time, Gabriel's wife was having a difficult pregnancy with her first child, but his bandmates were also unsympathetic about that and insisted that the show must go on. So the missed Friedkin opportunity, along with a stressful family situation, led to Gabriel's shocking departure from the band right at the time they seemed to be peaking commercially and artistically. But back to Genesis Live. In the big picture of rock history, this is not one that moved any mountains. It really was a rather pedestrian product, not something that has appeared in any gargantuan Rolling Stone list or anything like that. But dig below the surface, especially if you're a longtime fan or have a curiosity about the history of this band, and you'll find that Genesis Live is a hidden treasure. Playboy for some hush puppy shoes. One more time. 